I'm Bella the Make Mama Boss Lady behind Fiber and Fox. I have a above average amount of bronzer on today and this is episode 37 of my podcast. Welcome. If you are new here, I appreciate you joining in. If you haven't subscribed yet, we're getting close to 3,000 subscribers, followers, and I would appreciate if you went and considered hitting that subscribe button as you do. And if you've been with me all along or for a bit or whatever, I appreciate you. Thank you for being part of this little yarn chat community. You guys the best. You swell. Thank you. I usually cover some admin stuff first. Um, I don't really have any today. <laughs> Bella, I'm a crochet designer. I knit as well. And this is where I talk about all of it on the internet with you fine folks. Um, so yeah, I, I guess we'll throw in what I'm wearing as the admin section. <laughs> um, today I am wearing the Alori sweater tee. Um, it is a newly released pattern um, that I got to test Earlier in the summer, but it just came out um, first week of September um, by Lenitz Apparel. It's Lanray's first garment design, um, and I tested the size medium, I believe. Um, and she has kits now with Lion Brand for Chainette yarn. Mine is actually in a Hobby Lobby yarn in 100% um, cotton. Hers is like a I feel like Chainette is merino alpaca, maybe? I'm not even sure. Um, but I didn't use the recommended yarn. She was okay with that. Um, but she's made a whole bunch of beautiful versions in Chainette, and um, I held a cotton yarn, sport weight yarn double, it's the worst weight pattern. Came out a little heavier than I would have liked, but it's okay now for this fall weather, it's great. Um, made to pattern, and the only other thing is the neckline was a little excessively wide on the original pattern. Um, I brought mine in with a crochet chain around the edge of the knit ribbing um, after the test. Um, but she did adjust the, the neckline because a lot of people were having issues with it being just too wide. So um, the, the final pattern is adjusted. Lovely pattern. It's knit all in one piece. The, the sleeves are like part of the raglan increases. It's got this beautiful eyelet thing going. Um, very beginner friendly as far as a you want to knit uh, a sweater. Um, only short sleeve version. It's, a, it's only a tee. Um, I suppose you could Modify it and give it long sleeves if you wanted to, but it's a delightful tee. Um, it's got ribbing on the bottom, um, and it's very easy if you wanted to crop it as well. Mine is full length, um, but it's an easy one that if you wanted to go cropped, play around a little. Um, really delightful. So go check out. Lanray has tons of gorgeous like hat and accessory patterns. Um, it's just her first garment, and she's already got kits with Lion Brand, so congrats on that. It's fantastic. Um, so I'm loving this. I don't know if you can see. It's like a cream color with like rainbow flecks through it. Um, so I like that. I'm all about that rainbow. For the design portion, um, nothing new. The cardigan is still done. Um, and I'm actually, I've graded it. I mean, last time I talked to you guys, I was going to start grading it and I've gotten all of the grading done in within that two week-ish time span of last recording, um, which for me is really fast for grading a pattern. Sometimes I've really wrestled with some for a really long time trying to get, um, if you're not familiar, grading is when you size a pattern in all the sizes. So I design in my size and then you have to, um, adjust the pattern to fit different body types. Obviously all bodies are different and nothing is an exact, but there are standards that um, one is kind of supposed to follow um, as far as like, you know, sleeve length and width and bust. And um, first starting out, you might think that grading is just like you add, I don't know, like 10 stitches every size or something. And some people um, do like percentages, but bodies don't generally grow like evenly in percentage, like the difference between like a size small bust and a size 3XL bust, obviously the bust has grown quite a bit, but like the difference between a medium like neck hole, head hole, neckline, <laughs> and a 4XL neckline, you don't have a giant head because your body is of a different proportion, if that makes sense. So you can't just like up the sizes. Um, so like the V-neck, if I kept upping it, it would have been, you know, like at someone's navel in the larger sizes. So you have to kind of adjust each proportion differently. Uh, and there's no one right way to do it, I don't think. Uh, I do. I meant to grab my notebook, but there's probably, maybe I'll look after and put it on the screen, but I do everything by hand. A lot of people do spreadsheets, um, but I'm not good at spreadsheets, so it takes me even longer. I do everything out with a calculator and um, pen and pencil and a lot of erasing and a lot of muttering and mumbling uh, and just mathing it out the old school way, I guess. Um, but I took really good notes on this one. I'm getting better at knowing the information I'm going to need later on. Um, cause I, originally when I started designing, not even just garments, but anything, I took like super vague notes and then I'd come back and I'd be like, 
I don't even know what that means, so I can't tell somebody else. Um, so I took really thorough notes and like how I was getting the numbers that I was like cast casting on, starting with whatever. Um, so I have really thorough notes. And the grading process went really well this time, but I do have probably 30-ish pages of handwritten notes at this point. Um, and the only thing I have left to do is to do the yardage estimates, um, which again is the mathy formula business about like finding the square inches of your garment with your yardage and then estimating based on measurements for the other sizes. And it's not exact, but um, I have to give, you know, yardage recommendations for the patterns. The pa testers always test them out. Um, but of course that varies with what yarn you use, your tension being spot on or not, and you know, the weather. Um, but I do need to give some yardage recommendations. But after I get that done, hopefully this week, um, probably by the time you're seeing this on Friday, the following week, um, so September, what are we on now? So today's September 6th, it's Labor Day. So next week, I don't know, somewhere in the range of September 10th to 17th, maybe, <laughs> um, I will be doing a tester call. And I will announce that over on my Instagram. So if you're not following me there, uh, check out fiber.and.fox on Instagram. And I'm also planning on sending it out in my mailing list as well. Both of those things are linked down below so you can join um, either and follow along. If you are interested in testing, so the cardigan, which I haven't shown you, talked about extensively before, but um, I'm not gonna go into great detail about it here because um, I've talked about it quite a bit in the last episode, but it is currently unbuttoned, but it is a V-neck crochet cardigan in fingering weight um, and it will be sized for um, extra small to 4XL and I think it's really lovely and the feedback that I've gotten is that um, nobody's really seen a crochet cardigan quite like this out there. Um, there are definitely crochet cardigans um, on the market um, and in fingering weight as well but there are definitely fewer than there are knit fingering weight cardigans for sure um, and this definitely has a knit vibe to it. Um, it doesn't uh, necessarily scream crochet. It's got really pretty buttons that I can't find. There they are. Pretty buttons, pretty ribbing. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, so I'm going to be doing a tester call, like I said, probably in the next week or so of this video I'm going live, um, once I sort out those yarn averages. And it'll probably be at least, I think, an eight week test. Um, so probably starting, mm, mid to end of September and running through November-ish sometime. Uh, the dates will be in the application when that goes out, but I'll try to give you enough time because I know that fingering weight and all of the size ranges, you do need a bit of time going into the holiday season and yada yada, all of that. So I shall be gracious. And by the way, I still haven't committed to a name. Um, in the pattern as written, it's currently called the Fields Cardigan, which I do like. I didn't uh, announce that here last time, but I did over on Instagram. Fields cardigan, um, because it's got a very, the stitch used in it has kind of a, a rose and furrows kind of, um, look to it, I guess. Um, and I wanted, I didn't want to call it, I know that, um, somebody told me, actually, I didn't know, uh, but I didn't want to go straight with harvest cardigan because that sounded very seasonal, um, but apparently Tin Can Knits has a knit harvest cardigan, so I do not want to use that name, um. So Fields kind of felt like it wasn't necessarily like a pumpkins and fairs season um, name. But, you know, Fields are always. <laughs> and I didn't want to go with like Amber Waves of Grain or something. Because um, I don't like to name stuff after the color usually. Unless it's Grainbow, then we name it Grainbow. But um, yes, we don't want to name it for the color. So Fields felt like a pretty good name. Um, and it kind of encompasses what I'm going for on this. Um, the other name that I was considering and I pulled on Instagram and I think this name won out by like one or two votes. So it was not like a landslide. I was hoping for like some really decisiveness by you people. Uh, <laughs> you're just as confused as I am is, um, Thuris, Thurismos. Um, and I hope I said that right. I listened to it several times on pronunciation. Thurismos. Yes. Um, it's a Greek word, and I do not speak Greek, but um, it is a word that's used in the Bible for harvest, um, in like reaping, 
Um, so I kind of felt like that was cool. A lot of my patterns have like more complicated names or in different languages or something with like a lot of meaning. So fields just kind of felt, I don't know, plain. Um, so you let me know down below what you think. Um, should I go with the plain and simple? Um, or something that's going to be, you know, harder to spell and find, but cooler? I would love your input on that. But that design is coming soon. Stay tuned for the tester call. Hopefully we'll have the pattern released December sometime. Other than a single finished sock, I don't have any finished objects to share with you, so we're just going to call it the whip section, I guess. Um, but I did finish, I think I had talked about them last time. I don't, I think I had just cast on the cuff actually last time. But I finished the first of the pair of zigzaggy socks by Potter and Bloom. Oh, I should have grabbed a blocker, but they are not within reach. But oh, you can actually see it really nicely on screen. Actually, kind of better than in person. Let me flip it this way for you. If I stick my arm in it, that will help. Probably not. It's got zigzags. You see them? Yes, there they are. Um, so this is a new pattern by Potter and Bloom, and yeah, it's a zigzag textured sock. I guess it depends on the angle that you get it at. <laughs> but I promise there's like chevroni zigzags throughout. Um, and I really like vanilla socks are fast, but I, I like the fit of a textured sock better. So something with a little, like you can see that part super well, um, a little bit of texture in there just kind of keeps them on my foot better. Um, and this is actually a super easily memorizable I think it's a 10 row repeat. Um, look, I got my little rainbow stitch markers on there because Virgie did forever. Um, but yeah, 10 row repeat, and it's very easy to tell if you've gone wrong. Uh, I try to stick to sock patterns where I don't have to think too much about it. I haven't done any like lacy ones or anything where I have to actually follow a chart and like be on my toes. Socks pun, sock puns intended. Um, but yeah, I, like if I put it down, I like to be able to pick it back up and know where I am. Um, and this, you can just definitely tell, like, if you start, that's a hair. If you start, you know, zigzagging in the wrong direction, it's pretty obvious. This first, um, I actually, I cast on this one and I knit down through the, the leg, I think. And then I cast on the other one, knit down the leg, and then completed the rest of the sock. And now I'm working on the second one. I'm not sure why I did that method. I think I just didn't want to think about heel flaps or something. I don't know. I had a reason, I don't remember at this point, but um, the first one, this is the second one actually, <laughs> this is the first one. This was the second one that I then started second and then finished. I don't know, there's a method here somewhere. I don't know what it is. It's madness, that's what. Um, there's definitely some where I've maybe turned it into like a 12 row repeat. Some of the zigzags are a little wider than some of the other zigzags, um, but seeing as you can barely see them at all, I think it's okay. And they are socks. Um, so I'm going to finish these up. And I think this will be, I counted, I'm trying to keep track for my year end video, but um, I think this will be my ninth pair of socks this year. Did I just lose the needle? Because I always lose these. Nope. Okay, good. They're in there. Um, and I have it in project bag from Emily. I talked about this last time. Super cute, super foxy. Love it. Um, oh, and I should say the other yarn that I'm using, actually I didn't say either of the yarns. <laughs> this yarn is West Yorkshire Spinner Signature Four Ply in the color Cardamom, Cardaman, we're not sure, mine's mislabeled, I think. Um, or it's a version <laughs> of something. Um, and then this is a scrap from my first ever pair of socks um, by Knits for Comfort in the color something about fires and cider and spices. Fireside, cider and spice, I think. Um, but yeah, so I just cast on the little top of the cuff in that and then I did the toe in it as well um so yeah those are really fun and I uh put if you want to go see it I'm not gonna put it in here but you can go look on Instagram I bought some like uh home esque uh they were sold as like makeup organizers or drawer organizers but I'm using them for socks they're nine little cube things and I can fit two pairs of socks into each cube um and I organized them up and they're in my closet I bought two sets they click together I feel really good about it I had all my socks in a like little probably I don't know 10 by 5 ish little straw basket thing um, but they were stacked on top of each other and I couldn't see the ones at the bottom and I wanted to look at them all um, so these clear little containers are fun. Got them at Aldi <laughs> of all places. Um, Aldi has some fun finds sometimes. Uh, so I grabbed them at Aldi and 
Maybe your Aldi has some too if you want to organize your socks. That is my only sock whip. I will be done with that one by the next podcast, and then I will probably cast on some of this yarn back here, also from Emily of uh, Evie's Crochet. I also reorganized my... Is this a helpful visual for anyone? Reorganized my stash back there. Um, this is the next design project. This and that. Um, someone is shooting off fireworks for Labor Day. Questionable. Um, anyway, so if you can hear that, sorry. Um, but yeah, as soon as I get the um, cardigan, at least the tester called on, if not out to testers, I'm going to start on that rainbow cowl design situation with the minis, and I'm very excited about that. And then the other whip that I'm so close to being done with, and kind of been languishing for a while, it doesn't even take that long to make, I was just making it take that long. This was cast on for my July vacation, and then I've just been you know, doing cardigans and whatnot, but I am almost done with my Mount Pleasant. I think it's just a Mount Pleasant. I don't think it's a Mount Pleasant top or tee. I think it's just Mount Pleasant um, by Pippin Pin. It's got this beautiful lacy scalloped edge on the bottom. It is a t-shirt. I finished the front neck shaping and we have these on stitch holders so we can uh, three needle bind off them together. I'm working on the back panel almost to the top of it and then, you know, gonna connect those two. Do, do, do. Um, and then just do the neckline or the little ribbed collar and pick up for sleeves. And I think the sleeves are just a few rounds. So very close to being done with this. I have like another inch or something before I finish off the top. It's a very, it's got a lot of drape this yarn. Um, and I did the size medium, but my gauge was slightly different. But other than that, the only other modification I did is I added an extra repeat of this lace, which was like an eight-ish. Why are you shooting out fireworks? Not a fan of fireworks, really. Um, but, yeah. Extra lace repeat. And I made it a little bit longer. I think the pattern calls for a crop. I made it slightly longer. We talk about it in some previous episode somewhere. Um, but this is some yarn that I got on the i 91 Shop Hop. This was from the first shop that I visited. I think I have the tag. Yes. Um, this is Earth Yarns in their Harvest line, um, Fingering Weight. And the harvest line, I think, is all um, naturally dyed. So, doo -doo -doo. fireworks. I keep saying I'm going to order the camera. I have serious camera commitment FOMO. Um, but I have a camera picked out. I just have no problem spending money, even if it's for my business, and I know it's a great purchase. Um, so somebody leave some angry comments and, like, tell me, Bella, please just go buy the camera. It's, like, in my cart. Like, pay for the camera, Bella. You have the money in your business account for the camera. You need a camera. Buy the camera, Bella. <sighs> Yell at me, people. Anyway, Earth Yarns. Um, and this is the colorway Buckthorn. And this is a fingering weight, but it kind of leans towards sport and naturally dyed and extra fine. So I thought this wasn't super wash. I keep thinking that it's not. That makes sense why it grew so much. I was thinking that it was just, it's definitely, it's definitely super wash. I know that. Um, I don't know if the naturally dyed ones, sometimes I think that they're naturally er than they actually are. Um, but yes, I do want to get, speaking of not naturally dyed, but non superwash, I do want to order, I have a gift card for fiber for the people. Um, and I want to order a, another color to make my cardigan in. I want a second version and there's a reddish colored, um, yarn, semi-solid. Uh, in her line that I think I might order and make myself a second along with the testers. I don't think I've ever made a repeat of any of my patterns other than like hats for selling inventory. But for myself, I've never made a repeat garment, but I really want another one of these cardigans in my life. I'm going to wear this a lot. I really like cardigans. Um, so very, very happy with that in case you can't tell. Those are my only whips. Um, I do have some acquisitions. I sort of, I guess they're acquisitions. Yeah, they're acquisitions. Um, so Rachel of You and You, who kind of orchestrated, not the shop hop, but the um, podcasters doing the vlogs, which if you haven't seen them, there's a whole vlog um, playlist on my channel. And I talk about, you know, all the shops that I visited for the I-91 shop hop this summer. So you should go check those out if you missed that somehow. Um, but Rachel of You and You 
in Windsor, Connecticut. It was her idea to have everyone do the four different podcasters do the um, the vlogs. So that was her doing. And then she kind of made a little just sweet thank you card that says thank you. I'll spice a little shape on it. Um, and then all of the shops signed it. It was really nice. Um, and then this pin from Channy P's Corner. It says, how can I can see it? It says podcasting and it's got like a yarn ball on a laptop. Get the camera, Bella, then the people will be able to see. Um, soft enamel pin. It's like, I don't know why it's soft. It's not soft. It's a hard enamel pin. What does this mean? Um, but yeah, I don't, I'm not a big pin collector, but this was a really sweet little gift. And then also all the shop hop people got, you know, a pin from the shop. So I will add those. I have a little like flag placard hanging thing with pins on it that I have acquired through the years. I'm not one to usually go out and collect them, but if I get them, I put it up on there. Um, so I'll put those up. And then the only other thing that, oh, no, just kidding. I also bought this when I was there and I forget. I feel like it might've been ad knits. AD knits, I think was the name of the um, maker. Um, but she carries some of her stickers and pins in her store. And I just thought this, I wish it was like the full rainbow. It was like red, orange, yellow, green. What's that about? But it's a knitted rainbow. So I got that for myself as well when I visited you and you again. And then I also acquired um, for my daughter's birthday coming up in the fall. We've talked about it before. Girl loves her some um, owls. So I had seen, I wanted to make her an owl she wants shawls for her birthday, which is hysterical because she's turning three and girl just wants knit and crochet shawls, um, which I think is so sweet. Um, so I have some other yarn that we've talked about before. We'll see it again as the birthday comes up. I'm going to make her, I think a version of my forgotten lore shawl. I'm not positive though. Um, but some kind of shawl, maybe some kind of close neck cowl thing. I don't know. She wants winter neckwear. Um, but then I also wanted to do something owly, owlish. Um, and yeah, so she wants to dress for her birthday as a mama owl, princess owl. She wants my husband to be a papa owl and she's going to be the mama princess owl, mama, mama owl, princess owl, which is kind of like a maker mama boss lady type title. And I love it. Um, so mama owl, princess owl, and I am supposed to be a baby owl. I'm not sure why she's the mama and my husband's the papa and I'm the baby. I tried to sway her on being the baby owl or the toddler owl or the child owl or even a teenage owl. And no, she wants to be the mama owl. So aim high, kid, I guess. Proud of you. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm a baby owl. <laughs> I had gotten, uh, it kind of went viral last year, so you may have seen it. If not, I'll put in a picture here um, of the I think it's just called the Feather Wing Shawl um, by Crafty Intentions. And then she also released a child's version. The pattern itself is the heftiest pattern ever. The kids, I don't know about the adult's version, but the kids' version is 99 pages. That's a lot. Um, definitely not printing that one. Uh, but it's sized from you know, a small and not like a baby baby, but I think it's like toddler through, I don't know, teen or something. Um, so definitely a lot of sizes in there, but 99 pages, my gracious. Um, but it definitely involves a lot of like shaping and short row type stuff, I think, um, to make the individual feathers. And it's something I probably could have figured out on my own or made something similar. Um, and maybe more owl shaped, um, rather than just like the shawl shape, but I didn't want to like rip off her very original idea. So I did buy the pattern. Um, and it's not, it's not that it, I don't know if it needed to be 99 pages. It's definitely very thorough and she has lots of photos in there. Um, as far as like each individual feather, there's a photo of and like what part of the feather and it's very, very thorough. Um, it's not written in a way that I personally love. Um, it's kind of in, I don't know what to call it. It kind of almost feels more like a spreadsheet maybe where everything's in like little columns and rows, not columns, but everything's in like rows with boxes around them. Um, which I, it's just, I don't know. I, I think it's good to separate 
because there are so many parts of this shawl, but it's, I don't know, it's like kind of distracting to my eye. But I haven't actually started the pattern yet, so it might be absolutely delightful once I get started, but that's my initial impression. I'm just like, whoa, that's a lot to look at. Um, but it seems like it's very thorough and that it'll be good. We'll find out. But I got for her birthday owl shawl for when she is a mama owl, princess owl. These yarns from Knit Picks, and I don't remember... I think this one, these are both stroll fingering weight. Um, oh, it says the names on them. Perfect. Gradients. I'm not one for gradient yarns usually, but um, I think this will be cool together. Um, so the pattern is, I think, the same stitch count for everything, but the gauge changes for each size. So like the smaller sizes are fingering weight and like the teenage sizes and bulky weight, which is, again, not a thing that I super duper love because I understand why totally because it would be much harder to write an individual pattern. Um, but if my kid was larger, I wouldn't really want a bulk, bulky weight shawl. Um, so I'm glad that hers is, I think, DK weight, sport weight. I don't know, something like that. Um, but I'm holding the two fingering weights double. I think it's DK weight for her size. I'm making like the size three, four. So I'm going to hold these double and hopefully get some really cool gradient action on the owl wings. Um, oh, she's a daytime blue mama owl, princess owl, by the way. Um, so these were the closest, and I, like, the nitpicks, like, blue yarn sale. I missed it by, like, a day. I had the dates wrong. So I had to pay full price. My own fault. Um, but this is ice sculpture, and this is a see you later, like the ocean. And then there's, like, an edging that goes around all the feathers and really pops them out, and I got Swish DK in the color Arctic. So... I'm probably not casting this on, so I probably should just wait until I started the shawl to talk about it, but it's a short episode, so. Um, probably not casting this on until, I don't know, October sometime. Uh, at least further on into September, because i got to work on this cardigan stuff and designs. But, yep, the yarns are from Knit Picks, We Crochet, whatever you please to call it. And I'm going to make the child size feather wing shawl and figure out some way, because that's just like a shawl shawl. I think I'm gonna put like, either like hair ties or like crochet ties onto the wrists, maybe like Velcro on the back so like she can actually wear it like wings, um, cause she's not quite coordinated enough to keep a shawl on. Um, so we'll see, it's gonna be a fun dress up outfit. Um, mostly now she dresses up as Moana and Elsa, um, whom she calls Emma Elsa for reasons we do not know. Um, so yeah. Mostly that's what she's into, and owls, but she doesn't have an owl costume, she wants an owl costume. So we're going to dress up in an owl costume, and it's going to be, you know, a great time. And that, you guys, is all that I had for uh, episode 37 of my podcast. Also, have you noticed that I have a daytime-ish blue Mama Owl Princess Owl maybe up there, and always have? Funny. Um, so, yeah. End of this episode. I will see you guys in the next episode. By the way, all the winners claim their prizes for the um, giveaway last time, so that's awesome. And maybe we'll have something coming up soon with 3,000 subscribers. So like and subscribe, notifications, you know the drill. I appreciate you guys, and I will catch you next time. Happy fall making stuff. <laughs> Bye.